Hello and welcome to another episode of a very good social media podcast where we try to live up to that name every day. I'm your host, Zach Gellia. Let's get into it. So on this episode, I'm so, so excited to uh, introduce everyone to Amy Keene, um, who has been a just a tremendous friend and colleague and, um, you know, source of knowledge and inspiration throughout my entire career. You know, we, we met um, back in 2016 uh, when she was with the Carolina Panthers, I was with the Steelers and have really been friends ever since and have bounced ideas off of each other. And, um, you know, anything that, you know, either of us have been going through, um, you know, we've always been just kind of a text message away. So um, really excited to talk about everything she's got going on right now and working with, you know, different clients, the NWSL, um, you know, and just really making an impact uh, like she always has. And so uh, lots of great stories. Uh, it was really great catching up with her. Um, so I'm really excited for everyone to hear this episode. Um, you know, she was someone that I've reached out to when I was trying to, um, you know, get this podcast launched probably five years ago. Uh, so this is a, an interview probably five years in the making. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Amy to the show. Hi, I'm really happy to be here. I, I have to say this is this is one of those episodes where I had circled. And honestly, I mean, you and I talked about like, I probably years ago, if I was ever to start a podcast, how, like, how do we go about it? So it's like, I think you've probably known that this is going to happen longer than I knew it was going to happen. So it's about time. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, it, it's cool to, to finally catch up. And I mean, we, we talk all the time, probably not as often as, as I'd like, but, um, but staying busy and catching up and, uh, you know, both have little ones at home. So I know, I know, you know, time is precious for sure. Yes, I know. I just got done watching a marathon of Peppa Pig. So this has been a nice pivot. <laughs> we we are on a Peppa Pig kick right now too. So uh, oh, we, the we had the, uh, what's it? The advent calendar for Christmas. And it there was actually a Peppa Pig one that like, you know, mm. you'd pop it open and there were like little characters and things. And so that was like her Adding favorite part, part every morning. Yeah. Adding <laughs> was, to my whole, I get a discount since it's off season. <laughs> yeah. So it was awesome. Well, cool. Well, honestly, like I just want to, I want to turn it over to you, talk about your journey, how you got to where you are, what you're up to now. Um, you know, you and I crossed paths, I think it was back in 2016, all the way back yeah. then, um, mm -hmm. which is crazy. I still, I'm pretty sure our first conversation was in the press box in Carolina. I remember and, it. Yeah. And we were talking about like Twitter media studio and saved me. You saved me. That was, I know we can, we can hop right into that. Uh, our first meeting was literally, I think it was one year into my job as a coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. And I was older, we'll kind of hop into it. I had like, a, I was a teacher for a few years before this. So I was like, you know, in my later twenties um, for a coordinator role. And um, I just remember Dan Latraga, who hired me at the Panthers had gone to his next gig and they're like, okay, in two weeks, you're going to, start the season you're gonna take over and I was like whoa I'm I haven't really live tweeted without Dan like all these things and I remember I was like preseason game because Steelers and Carolina Panthers always usually play, play each other in preseason and I was like I don't know how to I don't know how to put, do the gifts. How did he do the gifts? I had no idea. And I remember being like, I feel so stupid asking you but like how do you do how do you how did he get the gifts up there and you're like oh it's Twitter studio I had never heard of it never used it and your uh, your um, kindness and your tips, I still use today. It's my favorite thing to like, you know, young one, slide over. Let's introduce you to Twitter Studio. The magical world that is saved me a countless amount of times. I know when you taught, you then taught me you could search it in Twitter Studio. I was literally uploading, you know, touchdown GIF. And you're like, no, just search it. And I was like, my mind is blown. So wonderful first meeting. And I always remember how kind you were treating me. We were like enemies, right? Like the, in the, in, in the world battling it out, not really, but you know, just your kindness, you could have been like, screw you lady. Like you're, you're going to figure it out, jump in the deep end. Um, but no, you really showed me kindness and it, I have always remembered that. And I know I, I won't let you live it down because it was so meaningful to me. Well, it, it's funny you say that because like, I basically had that same panic one year earlier where, I was the first social person for the Steelers. I remember going on the bus to Canton to the Hall of Fame game was my very first game. 
And I was like, I remember wandering around down on the field for pregame. And I think I was on the sidelines for like the first quarter. I was like, what, what am I, what, I have no idea what to do. And so it was like, I don't even know where the press box is. Should I sit up there? Like, what am I supposed, it was like so much madness that I just, and no one could tell me because like no one had been through it before. before. (laughs) So it was like, I'm just, I remember taking photos of like, I think it was, I think Jerome Bettis was going to the hall of fame, but I'm like standing behind him taking pictures and I'm like, but there's a game going on and I should probably be saying something. So I, I, long story short, like everyone always has that first, like welcome to the NFL moment, I guess is probably the best way to say it. I'm glad that mine was with you though, because I could have been very out of luck if, you know, if I had gone much longer. <laughs> well, like you said, like everyone always thinks, you know, like obviously the teams on the field are going head to head and it's a big deal, but it's like you end up with friends. Like how many, you know, how many people did we have in our NFL superheroes chat for all those years? Yes. Where it was like, yes. you're constantly rooting for them and, and like, Correct. you know, obviously not out loud to everyone else, but like, yeah. you know, you're, you're hoping that that group of people ends up going the furthest. And and so it was, it was always great to have that support system. I was, thank you for being mine. <laughs> hey, I think you've repaid it a billion times over, <laughs> over the course of this, this friendship. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Appreciate that. You're the best. Well, cool. Well, so from Carolina, I think you were there until 22. Yep. 22. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, from, you know, everything you did at the Panthers and then, you know, what, what's going on currently and, and, you know, how's everything going? I was really lucky. Um, I guess I'll, I'll back it up a little bit because I think everything is related, even though it's maybe not, doesn't make common sense of A to B, but um, I studied, when I grew up in California, so um, I, I lived in Chicago for a long time as a kid, but my went to high school. My formative, like maturing years were in California. And I have three brothers and my mom is sports obsessed, like always won't run. Like, I don't want to say it's fantasy football. I can't think of the term, but like office bets where like they would, you know, pay $5 or pick them on. I don't know what it's called, but my mom would win every year. My mom has been a diehard Green Bay Packer fan since ever. Like, you know, family's got trying to still on the wait list at, you know, Lambo. like, and, um, so I had, uh, my three brothers were all like very close in age and I was a long gap in my parents. I was a surprise, like eight years later from my oldest brother. Um, so I went to, they were very active. So I went to every game and my mom and I, my mom would always tell me to pretend to be a sports anchor. Like, okay. You know, as we're waiting for my brothers from the locker room, she'd be like, all right, Amy Keen live reporting, give us the lowdown. And I would be like, okay, mom, Dave Keen, block number 88. Like, you know, and it was just so fun. So I, I knew I wanted to be a sports writer. That's what I always told people. Um, I had a funny moment in high school where this is like just when the internet was coming. I don't know if you remember like the lazy Sunday, um, Saturday night live that like broke YouTube. So it was like early YouTube. I think I was, it was, I was in high school. So my senior year is 2006. That's how old I am. And I won a contest to go to the ESPY awards. And it was like this huge deal. I won it by basically making a virtual sportscaster and gave them a report. Um, It was like eight bit. It was like, welcome to, you know, that's kind of the voice. It was the computer generated. So I won the contest. I got to go to the, I was going to go to the ESPYs, but I was not 18 when I signed up for this contest. I was like, it was like five days short of my 18th birthday. So I couldn't go. And the ESPN sent me a little mini fridge instead. That was my condolence. They were like, so sorry, but our legal team, I was like, my, I was crying, oh. all this stuff. Um, but I knew I, ever since I was like, oh, I could be a sports writer. So I went to, that was my degree in college. I graduated with sports journalism, but um, I ended up deciding like through my English and I went to the University of Iowa, like learning through like um, journalism. I was working with students all the time, Um, like, you know, with the staff um, newspaper, they would have like young people around. And I was really got into love teaching and mentoring. And so I decided to put my like sports, you know, journalism career on hold. It wasn't a lucrative business when I graduated college, even in 20. I think I said tw- I graduated in 2010. So like even then it was, you know, really high. So I knew I, I, my future wasn't maybe in that, but I had, had a lot of fun. So I ended up teaching um, in Chicago for four or five years and really, really loved it. Um, 
but I was like at that point in my life that I was like, okay, I think I want to go into sports finally at like, I must've been 25, 26. And I couldn't really afford to live in Chicago by not doing anything and being in sports. So I decided to move to Charlotte where my brother lived and he was like, stay with me. You know, instead of moving home with your parents, you move in with your brother and all his kids. And you're just like the aunt that's upstairs that, you know, is kind of smelly sometimes like, you know, that kind of anyway. So, um, but I ran, I got connected with this incredible woman that I remember from reading about her in, um, school where her name was Kathleen Hessert and she was like a crisis communicator. That was her and PR consultant. And I just, rem I don't know. I remembered her and I Googled her and she was like Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was like, sending her a bunch of cold emails and, and it ended up working. Um, out of all these emails I was sending to all these people. I, I'm never really someone that's pretty shy. I, I kind of just go for it, but that's just my style. I'm, I'm, extroverted I'm the youngest I was the annoying child growing up so it just it fit my personality to kind of be so forward um which has helped me it's not everyone's cup of tea but um and I worked with her for a really long time that's how I got to know Dan so basically in a long story longer um I moved to Charlotte not knowing anyone started just meeting people on Twitter because I had a Twitter account you know and met Dan LaTaraca who was um at the Carolina Panthers, iconic social media legend that he is. All of the crazy viralness, I just, I, it's just incredible. Like how many hits he's had. Like it's not just like a couple hundred thousand, like millions of retweets he's had in his career in, in different places too. He's incredible. Um, and then that, that's how I got at the Panthers and just kind of progressed um, through my time there. And at the end, it was really fun. I had a big big creative team and you know it was as much as we were losing <laughs> throughout my time there we sure had a lot of fun and a lot of fun online so um I've been really lucky that that's you know a big blip in my my lifespan and my career journey yeah I, so I think <laughs> no <laughs> but that was great like it's yeah. no one's path is ever linear or the same like it, it every person i've talked to and i'm sure every person that i'll speak to after you it's going to be the same like i didn't even know social media was a career when i got even when yeah. i got the job that ended up being a part of it of like social media like i didn't even know that that's what i was going to do so it's it, it it's always great to hear just how how things work out for everybody and and like i think everyone knows how much i love the panthers team like that's kind of my like <laughs> That's always been like my social media, like yeah. darling. Um, I've already talked to Astasia. I've talked to Angela yes. as well. So this will be a very Carolina Panthers heavy podcast for sure. Love it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's crazy how things work out. And, you know, sometimes just like you said, like you have to just go for it. Like no one is ever just going to hand you something. You have to earn it for yourself. Yes. That has been the ethos. I would say, or the thread of my life. Definitely. I love it. Cool. Well, tell me what's going on now. I'll, I'm glad for you too. So I think where we kind of even just left off just a minute ago of being at the Panthers, I had this great journey. I was older, you know, as I started, you know, I did a career pivot from teaching into um, social media, which is actually, I, I, I think I meant to bring it a loop around, but to I definitely see how teaching impacted my leading a team, leading, you know, a content team, and also like talking to a lot of different people all the time, as you know, and I'm sure many people, anyone who has a microphone that's been in social media knows that there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen and you as the person in charge of the accounts, right? Sometimes we can get a little too possessive, but if we're the protectors of the accounts. We say no a lot. We have to learn how to like manage expectations, but not the best leaders that I know and just in general don't aren't people like those are stupid ideas. Like you have to kind of give and take, learn, read the room. You know, I've had a lot of uh, moments where I'm like, you know what, this moment, this tweet, I do not think this is the right time. And I've had to be make those calls and say no. And I'm sure we all can relate to there's been a few of like, I wish there was a quicker delete button. Like I wish I would, you know, I've had those and those have been heartbreaking. Um, 
but through through that time, um, you mentioned being a parent earlier, I'm sure in some of your previous episodes. And um, I was, you know, blessed with having my miracle, you know, little boy named Trip, and he's five now, but um, I had him in 2018, literally the day of a game, pretty much. Um, I was, I was, uh, you know, this is how crazy I was. I don't recommend this. This is just, you know, me being a workaholic. But I remember I didn't take pain medicine because I was like, I need to be awake uh, if case something happens like the next day. Like that's how neurotic um, and probably deranged. But that's what my thinking was at the time. And so, um, you know, I did survive on ibuprofen. I like to like, you know, maybe it's not a horn I should toot, but <laughs> it, that warrior status has continued on even since, even since birth. But um, being a parent and just in general, people working, whether it's in sports or without, I think it's just being a parent and working is a challenge. And uh, I you did it for a lot of years. And at that point, I was just kind of, you know what? I think I was really, you've had Angela on this podcast before, just my heart and soul. It was at the point where I was like noticing that I was like delegating more of like, yeah, you lead this project or you do this. And I really didn't, didn't need a teacher or guide her anymore. It was just that where you just know. And I was like, at the point where I was like, it would feel great. Like God, what a blessing to like, be like, I think I'm ready to tr transition. And there's someone that like, I care about so much. I, she's just a lovely person, an incredible human, very, very creative and like take on like the, the next seat, get past the baton. It just felt right. So I was really lucky that I, I feel very lucky that it ended so well with the Panthers. Like, and even to this day, like when I run into people, they're like, Amy, and I'm like, oh my God, I get emotional, but it just, it felt right. I, I feel so honored to have them be a part of the story. Uh, my story, my, you know, trip story of like, they were so gracious to me and they didn't have to take care of me as well as they did, like not just mentally, emotionally, but like, you know, they really helped me um, figure out how to manage a team that travels is on all the time. And also having a child that had a lot of health concerns and was really emotionally taxing. So, um, but yeah, so after, so 22, yep, 22. I kind of transitioned from the Panthers and got to work with, I'm sure you've had Jared on, or you're going to have Jared on um, with Gondola for a little bit. And that was really awesome. And and building, um, being a part of the cog of, of that machine was really special. Um, and, you know, I share this openly, but like during that time, my son, you know, who's always had to be a warrior and had some health battles. Like we found some more pretty serious stuff related to his head. It was you know, pretty traumatic in the sense of it just was thing after thing after thing. And he needed um, multiple surgeries around his head. And we just, you know, when you get that kind of information and it's just one of those things where the doctor said, like, we don't know anything with the head, like it's just so precious. And, and we don't know if it was going to be what he would be like after surgery, basically. And so that was kind of the time that I knew I was like, I think I need to transition again um, to figuring what life was like and just put a pause on everything. And that was in of July of 22. So short, a lot of things happening all at once. Um, thankfully, you know, he's trip has healed really well. If I don't really, people follow me on Instagram and I like tell people, I'm like, I'm not really like a social person on Instagram. I'm just like a mom, but you're welcome to follow me. Um, <laughs> but if you follow me on Instagram, I'm not saying you should, I'm not, that was not me touting you, but, um, <laughs> anyone too, but, uh, he's very funny and he's just a sweet, sweet kid. I'm like, really, I know like with, with you, I understand when parents are like, I just look at them and I just want to squeeze them. They're just so cute. Like that's how I feel all the time with trip. And so that's been, you know, as he's been healing, I've started, you just like, we've talked about, like, we have people that we admire in the, in the business. And I try to, you know, I'm like a Pisces. I try to keep it chill and I love talking to people and being sociable. And that just kind of people were like, Hey, what are you up to? And I'm like, well, I'm trying, you know, trying to figure this out a little bit with my son. And they're like, well, can you help us here? And 
we'll figure something out. And I was like, okay, it's, you know, I love this person. I can help them. And so it's kind of morphed into, um, I won't even say it's a side hustle anymore, but it's like, a, um, you know, working with who you really need on the podcast is um, my BFF in life of Cecily Pienza, who is at the New England Patriots for, I think, God knows, 11 years. Like, I don't know how many rings she has. It's probably in a sock drawer. But um, she's so we, you know, have decided to kind of help more people, more people of our friends in the industry. And, you know, I, I don't have like a quirky like, here's the name and this is what we do because you're building it. And it's kind of it morphed into like, hey, can we help a few friends? And then it's like more friends. And it's been really cool. I don't know if that sums it up in a nice bow, but um, it's been nice to kind of dab my toe back into the industry that I really love. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and just so much to talk about there too, where it's like being a parent is something like it changes your life quite literally changes your life, yeah. of course, because you're not just mm -hmm. responsible for you anymore. You, you actually have to take care of this little one. But it's like, it just put, for me, it was, it just put everything into perspective. It's like, you know, you know, I love my job and I love everything that I've done up to this point, but it's like my identity basically when I was first in the industry was like, I'm Zach Steeler, social guy. And it's yeah. like, That's and now idea. it's, yeah. And, and it's like, and for so long, that was, it was like, I'll work as long as I have to, cause it's just, it's me, you know, I was mm -hmm. engaged at the time. My fiance mm -hmm. was still living in Canada. It was like, I went mm -hmm. home to myself. So it was like, I'll just work and work and it's fine. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. it's like this, you know, this little one comes into the world and you're like, this is the most important thing that's ever happened. And now yes. it's, now it's stacking and reordering your priorities where it's like, mm -hmm you have to figure out how to do this as a parent and and it's not always easy. No, no, trust me. I like, I probably have a hat on because I have so many gray hairs. Like literally my hairstylist is like always like, you know, like, Oh, it's not that bad. And the last few times she's like, wow, it's really, you're getting really older. You're really stressed. I was like, I think it's from previous years, but um, <laughs> I'll, I'll know. I'll know next time to add more color. So well, and, and like, and you mentioned missing, like missing a game. I can still remember the three games that I've missed in my entire seven years in the NFL. And it was my wedding day. <laughs> and exactly. that was, that was back when I was the only social person for the Steelers. So I basically had to prepare for like a month to make sure that someone was okay with covering this game. It's a preseason game, by the way, in New Orleans. And I remember, Where's why, Wi-Fi? yes. And it was just like, I, I, I had to prepare for so long to like, to get married. And then it was like, and then my, my parents got in a bad car accident one year and they're, they're both fine. Everything was good. But I remember I missed, it was another preseason game in green Bay. And it was like, but at the time I had people working with mm -hmm. me, so it wasn't that big a deal. And then my third game was, I missed the last game of my last season with the Cardinals because our little one was born. And so it was like, it's crazy to think that, you know, that was like one, it was just, that's your identity. And that's such a big part of who you are, but like remembering like vividly that it's like, I was not there to cover these games is like yeah. in the, in the grand scheme of things, like who cares? It's not a big deal, but it's like in those I moments, you're like perspective. Yeah. yeah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> right. If only we were, I'm sure you're much more sensible now in certain things of like, yes. you know, I wish it only then, but I mean, those are three really, you know, significant reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, but then, you right. know, like when, when you're young and you're, you're thinking through this stuff, like it's like, like I said, like working for a month to like prepare for this preseason game that no one's going to watch anyway, like being able, if I could go back in time and just be like, buddy, relax like oh yeah if you posted nothing no one would care it's fine <laughs> like life will go on so it's it's just you you get this perspective of you know it's so do or die or make or break and it's like you know everything but it's like it's it's a job it's an amazing job and it's so much fun but it's like it, it's work it is <laughs> I probably um, would have been the crazy person to text at the altar, so I'm, or tweet at the altar. You know what I mean? Like Panthers have announced. 
<laughs> but I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> well, that's uh, my, like my wife is good about checking me whenever I like I'm on my phone too much and I'm trying to get mm. better. And I think I am getting better, but I mean, I guess I would, I would let her attest to that. But even my, even my little one now, like if I'm doing something on my phone, she'll walk up and she'll say, Dada, put phone away and like pull. Oh. I'm like, okay, I guess I've been on this for too many minutes this morning. And oh, so it's just, I, it's so funny. That's adorable. I'm going to see if my, my, I think my son is like, you have a phone. I need my iPad. That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i'm glad that that's so cool i i've like i've seen obviously like with your hat and, and shirt yeah. like i've seen you doing stuff with um with jordan over with the nwsl and i have yeah. her on on the pod later on i'm trying to get dan uh with the hurricanes on at some point too Absolutely. the invite is out to cecily as well okay um I'll so if you can her. put in put in a good word because uh that would that would definitely yeah. be awesome but i'm i it's so cool to hear like that you two specifically are kind of getting going and yes. uh, that's that's a, a dream team for sure well to only know like we are the opposites of the opposites she's the yin yang like i don't know which one's what but like it's so you know especially if you know social voices really well uh you know the patriots at that or during the tom brady era bill belichick like you know do your job versus the carolina carolina panthers where it was like you know random emojis you know like funny um, all the SpongeBob memes, like I'm sure everyone's sick of those, like, but we were really into them, um, which is, it's just fun and just wain, wacky and zany um, uh, voice. And so it's been fun to do it together of like, we're just a, a good compliment. Like, you know, we have moments where like, we're like, okay, I need a little bit more Cecily. I need a little bit more Amy. So it's nice to not be again like it just kind of unfolded and happened in a, such a strange way and it's been so fun and it's been nice to be like uh someone who who speaks your language of the sports nfl sp social verse um so it's just been so lucky and yeah we've been able to work with the national women's soccer league which is kicking off i don't know when this episode airs but it kicks off in march um everyone should go to a game it's so much fun not just because you want to support women but that should be a reason, but it's also because the competition is electrifying. Like, you know, even people who don't even love soccer, they like, like they've been going to a few matches. I've been sending people to be like, Hey, in my network, I think you live in Kentucky. You should go to Louisville. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I totally have actually. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I know I have met you one time online, but I heard you live here. You but go, 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 go. Uh, it's, it's been fun. So it's uh, that's, that's been, it's been really awesome to, be able to use some of the knowledge from the NFL and translate it into um, another league. And it's been, it's been so fun. And I've been really lucky that that's been part of our, our journey too. And and, and now people are like, Hey, I'm going to like, they tell me they're, they're like, I went to this match or like, I'm following like on EA, I'm, I'm Trinity Rodman or, you know, I'm playing Alex Morgan or Roosevelt. So it's been, it's been really cool. So I have loved being able to kind of like, you know, put on the old social pants <laughs> and dive in there and do something that you, you know, you love, which we all do. We just love social. We love creating conversations, making people feel good. And that's what social is supposed to be. It's supposed to be number one. It should be fun you know it's got to be informative and things like that but it should be fun that's what i hope i hope most people when they like you remember people remember how you made them feel and i hope my takeaway is always like oh you know she's she's fun like and that's what i hope when people you know around social accounts that my favorite are are ones that are just fun like it's not all like ticket sales. <laughs> Here's the sponsor, which is nothing wrong with that. But, you know, it is nice to have just something a little bit out there, a little fun. Well, yeah. And I mean, like everyone in this industry, like you mentioned earlier, like there's so many voices coming in and so many requests and there's so many yeah. goals and things that you need to do. And it's like, you just kind of get caught in the weeds a little bit too often. And then I'm guilty of this myself where it's like, you know, I'll be stressed out and, you know, so many different things and meetings and trying to figure out, you know, all these different ways of, of achieving our goals. And then, you know, look out the window and it's like, Oh, like I'm at the ballpark. Like I can see 
left field from like from my window. It's like maybe cool. maybe I should relax for five minutes. <laughs> but it's totally but, been there. But that's it. Is like you have like it's whatever the Spider Man quote was. It's like with great power comes great responsibility. And it's like if you take you take it too seriously, it's it, it's tough. But it's like all you the littlest thing of like liking some kid's TikTok video or commenting right. on some, like that literally makes such a big deal and, and creates these moments that like these people will remember forever. They'll be lifelong fans. They'll never forget. And it's something that's so easy for us to do that. It's like there, there just needs to be more of it. Like you said, more fun, yeah. more love, more care, and um, just more giving. Yes. Hands down. I love it. That's accurate. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Getting back to, I want to stick with it. NWSL soccer. Like we were just talking about, like I was never a soccer fan growing up. Like my sister had friends that played soccer. Like it, it was always something that was happening nearby. And I had, you know, friends that played soccer, but it was never like, Oh, it's, that's not my thing. Like I play hockey. I play baseball. Like mm -hmm. I stick with that and I watch football, but I think it was, uh, Right. Like, well, I guess it's during COVID because I, I don't know what's pre and post COVID at this point, but like it was <laughs> the first sports league that came back that I remember watching was Serie A, like the Italian Super League over, uh, obviously over in Italy. But um, when they came back, I was like, I, I got to watch sports like I this is just killing me. I need something to watch. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to pick my favorite team and uh, and just yeah. start watching. So then it was like, I loved it. So, so I became a Juventus fan still to this day. Like I, I watch them every week and then I was like, okay, well now, you know, everyone talks about the premier league and, you know, I see all, all mm -hmm. the, you know, all the news and things, um, you know, throughout ESPN and, and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, well I need a premier league team. Cause I was just watching, you know, soccer to watch soccer. And so I landed on Liverpool because the owners of the penguins, who is obviously my favorite hockey team owns Liverpool. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, well they must, not be all that bad. And so now I have two soccer teams I watch all the time. Anyway, this is the longest possible segue to, I just, I Love wanted it. to talk more about the NWSL, like women's world cup, never miss a game. Like I, it's, it's so good. It's so competitive. Like every game is so exciting. So like, just take me through, like one of the things we normally talk about is like one of your favorite projects that, you know, you've, you've gone through and um, you know, all the way from like, here's an idea all the way to, it's now live in the world and people are reacting to it. So um, if yeah. those kind of cross over in the NWSL, it happens yeah. to be that, that project, I, um, it, this would be a really I got one. perfect. Then this was a very successful uh, long segue, but um, <laughs> the, the floor is yours. No, it's been awesome. So, you know, Cecily and I have been able to be a part of the NWSL's content marketing journey, all thanks to Julie Haddon, at the um at the NWSL, she is the CMO, and she came from actually the NFL, but we did not know each other um at the time. Um, and I, th I think the one of our proudest projects with them, and that's a huge shout out to Julie, is we wanted to have an LCC program similar to a ton of other sports league MLB. Um, NFL. Um, I don't think NBA does it, but we obviously you got you're very familiar with it being in the NFL and and MLB. And we wanted to do something similar. We found that biggest part of people not necessarily right for the media being told that they don't care about win sports or people say like the the whole um diatribe of that is that they can't ever find it. And so we wanted to be able to bring content creators who are super talented, who may already have been working in the field, you know, women's sports, or maybe had been coming from the NFL or MLB to cover um, matches all across the NWSL and share the content with the team, the players, and on their own social. And Julie was a believer from the get-go. Obviously, she came from the NFL, and we were like, we want to do this here at the NWSL. And, you know, we did. <laughs> and I... I will say, I mean, I I don't I don't know if it's a characteristic, but, but I think it's because of my mom, Midwestern, you know, my mom's from Wisconsin and just that home buddiness. My mom was like always the house that people came over to after football games. She just was that type of mom. Always had snacks ready for everyone and like, you know, whip something up 
So, so I don't, I think I've adopted this in, an, in the own, my own millennial way. We're just like, I like to be my online presence, I guess, or who it's really who I am, but I try to help people and be homey and just like make people feel welcome. And so I was so lucky that like, you know, we got the go ahead to build an LCC program for the NWSL and the season starts in March. We started in March. <laughs> and so I had to be like, okay, who do I know in Orlando, Louisville, Kentucky? Who do I know in like Portland, Oregon? And can I all of a sudden be like, can you go shoot this? Figure it out. It's going to be amazing. And I was so lucky that I think a big quality of people who work in social and you can probably attest is just like you got to pay attention. You got to listen, like whether it's literally listening or social listening of what your audience is saying about you. And so I was fortunate enough to know that like there had already been a talented creator, creators across the NWSL really caring and, and holding the sport up, the league up and financially just of their support, their care, and obviously spending money to see them see athletes play and um, buy merchandise. There was already a great group of creators that I tapped into. And that was something I think the most proud moment is, you know, we got to have people who are already covering this league, then get paid to cover this league and then have their favorite player team, you know, post their content. Like, I mean, it was just like all the wins and all like, my empath and like Pisces heart was like exploding. Like, if, oh, of course, my <laughs> like off. Um, so I hopefully you can see. Okay, it's gonna have to be dark. Sorry for the transition. Boom. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happened with my light bulb, but uh, it was that was so empowering. Like, I love when you put amazing talented people in the right position to succeed, and then also being able to make a living off of this. So. That was, I think, the most exciting piece of the project. And we did it for a whole year. I literally don't know how. Like, some days I'm like, how did I cover 152 games? Like, literally every game we had creators there. Um, and that was bananas. But it ended up working. And people loved it. Players loved it. Um, and Julie was a huge, you know, believer to be like, we need to make sure that this is a – a staple of, you know, how we honor and cover this league um, to do it justice is like, let's do it like the other leagues, right? Like, why not? So that's, that oh, would man. be, hopefully that was oh, a succinct man. bow. <laughs> yes, that was, that was perfect. I mean, it, it and you, you covered it a couple really cool things where it's like, anytime anyone asks, like, what, what can my, like, what can my organization do to, you know, support the social team or, you know, what would, what would your organization or what's the best quality of the organization that you work in when it comes to social and it's, it's buy-in. Like if leadership and those who are making the decisions are like, this stuff is valuable. We're going to give you the resources to do everything you need to do. That's 85% of the battle right there. And then it's now your time to figure it out make sure that, you know, you're putting the thought, the effort, exactly. you know, your passion, your organization all into, you know, this package to, make sure that you're, you know, proving them right, basically. Correct. You, you nailed it. I think that's where we as, as social people, I feel like have now merged into many different factors of, you know, leadership positions. And that's been really cool because you've been able to kind of be a welcoming mat, a, you know, a mouthpiece of an organization and, but even to build trust, build relationships. I mean, we know that's always essential in any job, but for really, for social people, you do not want to make the coaches angry when you have to ask them for that favor. Equipment staff angry when you have to be like, I know I promised this would be the last time I asked you for a jersey, but like there's really one more that I need. Um, you know, poor equipment staff. Like, I don't, this is a crazy random story, but one of, this is how I know I just have unique skill sets is Cam Newton did a YouTube video with Mr. Beast and, you know, Mr. Beast, right? Like, whoa, you know, huge deal. Well, Mr. Beast shows up and then they're just their antics, right? Like come to me and I'm the one in charge at, you know, 27, 28, what I'm just like, okay, I'm the one in charge. And <laughs> they're like, we want to drop, um, a hundred footballs from a helicopter above the stadium and have Cam Newton try to catch it. And I was like, okay, let me think on this. <laughs> How? 
can't really want to say no to Mr. Beast um, because we want to keep him happy. You know, it's Mr. Beast. You want to understand, like, what is he going to put in this video? Uh, and so I was like, okay, Cam is not, no one is going to allow Cam to catch this from whatever distance in, in a helicopter. But we had his, um, one of his, um, it's Jake the Viking. I don't know if he's still part of the Mr. Beast crew, but he was the one that ended up catching the balls. But I literally had to call FAA, had to call ops and be like, listen, this is going to be happening in 15 minutes. I know this is crazy and I'm just a social person, but I'm here to tell you that Mr. Beast is going to in a helicopter and going to drop balls from the stadium. <laughs> And it worked. I ended up making it happen. I have no idea in how in 30 minutes I got FAA approved to fly a helicopter over the stadium hovering and drop 15. I think that's all I could get from ops. Their poor intern was like, I don't think I'm supposed to use these. And I'm like, I need the, I need these balls. Uh, that's probably my craziest story. And then Mr. Beast didn't even end up putting out the video. So it was like, uh, really was a downer. Or I think we're like course. one minute in another video, but it was crazy. Oh, yeah. oh that's amazing. The, I, like the, the tattoo of anyone who works in this industry is just, we'll figure it out. Like it, it's uh, like, no matter what the request is, whether it's like, you know, something relatively simple and easy to execute all the way to like this, like Mr. Beast is here in a helicopter. <laughs> it's I know. like, what do we do? And it's like, well, it's somehow, like you said, it somehow ends up on the social team or, you know, you at the time too. It's like, yeah. well, what do we do? And it's like, uh, uh, let's do this. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like I've, I know. I've never done this before. So I think that's what I look for in a lot of young people. Um, is like this this quote unquote figure it outness that you talk about. I know you're I think one of your questions is going to be about advice. And that's kind of what I tell most people that I work, you know, talk to or like I even work with, you know, a lot of like Astasia, for example, you know, I had just fallen found her on not found her, but like she was really, she didn't think she was going to be in social media. I'm sure she told you like she um you know, so I asked someone, I was like, hey, do you know anyone who's good on Twitter? Like, I'm looking for someone that just, like, gets it themselves in order to bring someone onto the the Panther side. And that was Asia. I was, like, reading her tweets, and I was like, you're so funny. Like, you should come work here. And now she's, like, a superstar, right? Of Like, she always was. But, like, you know, just the little baby, like, trampoline, and then she, like, skyrocketed. Um, but it's been really cool getting – helping young people find jobs. I'm like, hey – I don't know if you've ever thought about social media, but like you are so funny. I know you're tweeting to the, you know, ether because your tweets don't have very many engagement, but you are so funny. I think you should try working in, in sports. And it's so funny is that person is now doing that exact same thing. They worked for the Bears as an intern and then now they're at an NWSL team doing social. And so these moments are like so fun. So that's what I say is this, you need to have, you know, figure it outness where you just get it, you experiment, you try. And, you know, if you don't make it, we just like, you know, you don't make it work. You, you figure something else out. So that's it. Well, see, now you're, you're taking my amazing segues and already asking yourself the question. So, uh, but no, I, I like completely agree. It's, you know, I, there's always stuff out there about like, should hiring managers be looking at people's personal social when hiring? And it's like, for me, well, look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. So close. I tried. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just thought I had a really good idea there and the, the light came on. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like it, it's when I'm looking at like someone who's applying for a social job on any of the teams that I've been at, it's like, I end up going on and looking at your accounts you know, most of the time everyone is pretty, you know, safe and understands that these yeah. things could be used in a yeah. negative way if, if you don't treat them sure. right. But like, but exactly like you said, like I can go on someone's Twitter or TikTok or Instagram and it's like, you can tell almost immediately, like this person gets it. Like they, it's not like, yes, they're not working for an NBA team or, you know, they're not coming to you from Nike, but it's like, mm -hmm. They're putting out content that works, even though they have, you know, 500, a thousand followers, but it's like, yeah. you can see almost immediately, like, just like you said with Astasia, it's like this person should be working for a sports team because they would be perfect. Yes. 
Exactly. <laughs> and it's been really fun. Like, you know, Stasia, um, we've been able to like now is, you know, kind of doing a little bit of everything these days. I've been able to have Stasia kind of work with me on a few new projects. And it's been so fun to like, you know, that's what you the sports world is so intertwined. Um, I don't want to say it's small anymore because it is quite large but um it is really nice to have these like moments of crossing paths again and um uh, that's what I, I really have enjoyed the last you know phase of my life is get you know you get to work with so many different creatives and I and now I'm like finding people I'm like you're just so good at what you're doing no wonder like your content is amazing because you put so much care and effort into it and so I love that you're exploring all these wonderful people I've I'm I've really enjoyed it no, it's, and it's been great just because, like you said, like I have met so many incredible people along the way and I've learned from so many people. I mean, like how many times have you and I talked about like what, I don't know what we're doing here. Like what, what, should, oh, what, yeah. what is happening? So it's like, but yeah. being able to take all of those conversations, all those things that, you know, we have learned together, you know, we've learned from Cecily or Alex or Sam or Jen mm -hmm. or whoever mm -hmm. it might be all through these years. It's like. I wanted to find a place where it's like these conversations now people can actually watch and learn with me instead of just, you know, me learning and selfishly being like, all right, well, I'm, I'm good to go. Let's keep moving. So, yeah. um, so this, this has been, been a great been, teacher. You, you, everyone would say that you've just been amazing. You're the best. That's why I like, I keep, remember I keep telling you, and this is, uh, Zach didn't tell me to say any of this, but I, I have told many people, I was like, if you, you know, I'm not hiring, but like, if I was like, you know, sure, I'd take you. But like, if you could work anywhere in sports, hands down, Zach, every time I'm like, you know, when you've had job posting, I'm like, why apply to it? Like all my mentees, I'm like, you must work there. Like, just because you're just, you're just so great. You're the best. So no, I, I appreciate it's, that. It's awesome. That well, you're, it... you're, you're coaching tree is extended. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It, it's good to hear that uh, all the pirates influencer boxes I'm sending your way are, are working <laughs> at this point. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's, it's so cool to see everyone's journey. You know, it's like I mentioned Jordan earlier from who's yes. head of NWSL social. And Incredible. it's like just being able to like working with her for so many years and, and like, uh, Eric Stark with Slate and like, yeah. like Jared was another one, like having yeah. him on the podcast later on, but like, it's just all of these people have made so many cool moves and, and have gotten to so many cool positions where it's like, it's fun to be able to one, like look back at all of the mistakes that I made when I was younger and like, not even just like, you know, the bad tweets yeah. or misspellings, but like, situations oh, where yeah so where, like situations where like i didn't i wish i would have handled myself differently or you know i was very gung-ho and passionate about one thing that now like it just it didn't matter as much as i thought it did and so like being able to anytime i have those conversations with anyone who's ever worked for me it's like i can i can safely help them and guide them through the situation because i'm like listen i've gone through this before I have handled it horribly wrong. So don't do it this way. And here, here's my <laughs> advice forward. Oh yeah. I've had many of those for sure. It has, it, it was, this is a terrible example, but I was explaining this recently to someone that works in social. They're like, they forgot a player's birthday and they're like, what do I do? And I would love to hear your answer actually. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I told her the best advice, but in my time, I thought it was the best advice of like, you know what, if it's still before eight, nine o'clock, I think you can post it like in the evening, you know, if it gets later, then it's like, looks you really more obvious <laughs> that you forgot. Um, but if you do end up forgetting, it's already passed. I personally would not put on a happy belated birthday. I would just say you owe them. Just be honest. Owe them. And you're like, Hey, I'm going to get you big on this next carousel or I'm going to do a video feature. Or I'm going to go to your camp and I'm going to take all the social content you need. Um, but I, I I remember being someone that's forgot a player's birthday and just, just total tears of like, this player's never going to talk to me. I am going to lose my job. Like just bananas of things. But that's how I felt. Um, so I don't know what, what if you have better advice for a situation like that. No, I, I, I think that's right. I mean, like it's, it's always our job in leadership positions. Like I'm. 
I'm always going to be the one that jumps on any grenade that my team has to handle. So it's like, exactly yes. like, ex exactly like you said, like I would, I would have gone to the player, told them exactly what happened, talked through it. Like, granted, I've had to do this in the past, not from a birthday, but I remember we posted something with the Cardinals where we were hyping up one of our draft picks from the previous draft at training camp. He ran this amazing route, but obviously at training camp, he's running it against his team. So then we put this out and it was just, it, it seemed great at the time. And, you know, you're, you're kind of tunnel vision on what good content is and, and what will get picked up. And mm -hmm. you don't think of like, Oh, well, there's another guy in our uniform that we're making look bad. And so it was like, again, I dove right in, apologized to everyone I could. Um, luck. I mean, the, the guy was having, um, I think he was having like a surprise baby shower or someone was having a surprise baby shower for him and his wife. So we were like, we got you. We'll, we'll be there. Like we went and got photos for him and like videos oh, and gave so him all this nice. stuff. But it's like, but the big, like everything, like you said, everything I'm saying is like, you're going to mess up like this industry. Like if you are perfect, I would love to have you on this podcast and tell me how you've been <laughs> perfect all these years, but like, yeah, you're yeah. going to mess up and it's, it's, it's not going to be the end of the world, but don't be the person who deflects the blame somewhere else or tries to think of an excuse as to why this happened. Like if you mess up, you own it, you move on, you get better. Exactly. Exactly. Perfectly. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Well, all right. Well, so I, I mean, honestly, like I, we could talk for six hours. I will, I will not keep you for this long, but I will finish this up. Um, I want to do some, some quick hitters, just goofy things, pop culture, industry stuff. Um, answer them as quickly or as slowly as you want. And uh, and I promise I'll, I'll wrap it up. <laughs> I love it. Do it. All right. So what is your least favorite industry buzzword? Oh, that's, uh, I think, I don't know if I, I hate it right now, but I do kind of get like, mm, it's just thought leadership i think i've de definitely used that in terms i'm like i just like i like say i'm a thought leader but then i'm like what is a thought leader what is that so i think that's one that i'm like when people say oh i'm a thought leader i'm like i wonder what they mean by that <laughs> i'm not like i don't disagree i just kind of like perk my head of just like what is a thought leader i should i don't even know <laughs> well and, and buzz like the buzzwords i swear i speak like just exclusively in buzzwords at this point, but it's like, it, it's like when you say a word over and over and over again, and it just loses yeah. all meaning. Like that's what some of these buzzwords are where it's like, oh, just God. like you said, like uh, being a thought leader, that might mean something different to me than it does to you, that it does to, you know, whoever on LinkedIn has that their profile. And it's like, I know I got to check to make sure I don't have it on my LinkedIn. I say, and then I like, your, totally <laughs> your headline on LinkedIn. <laughs> I know. Um, you see Let's, that? Just know I changed it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different now. I promise. Um, <laughs> what would be if you could have one? What would be your favorite brand or team on social? Ooh, um, I would say I had like different things about different teams. So I'm gonna pick a um. NWSL team. I really like uh what um Gotham, the Gotham FC team, which is New Jersey. Um, it was led last year by a, one of the goats in in social and sports is Jimena, um, who ran the US Women's National team. I count for so many years as a legend. Her and her team managed Gotham last year and they were slaying in some tweets. Let me tell you, they were they were on it. Um, that was really fun to watch. So I would say that be that was my favorite last year. Um, and what there's a, an account that I really like recently. Um, I'll have to I'll have to find it and send it. I can't think of it. I'm really old. I can't think of like recall <laughs> things very much anymore. Uh, I can recall, you know, a player's birthday that I missed, but I cannot recall <laughs> uh, more important things sometimes but um i'll have to I send you that. to like other brands but i no, don't I'd, have a good answer no that was a good answer i'd, I'd feel the remembering thing so you should see the notepad on my computer oh. it's like 
I have to, like, if I need to remember something specifically, it's immediately in there. And I, I, oh. I remember it most of the time. My notes tabs are crazy. Oh Lord. Well, but so it, <laughs> yeah, uh, same, 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 same. I, um, last episode I talked about brands that I liked. I said the Chicago bulls, like, I think they're oh, insane. Yeah. Um, this one I'll say, uh, LAFC in the MLS. Yes. The Their Chicago stuff system. just like and like the access and like the just the like passion and like the connection that you get from their stuff. Like I I would put them up against anybody. I'm with you. I love them. Uh Parks and Rec or the Office. I will say I, I did not watch Parks and Recs. And I only watched the first season of The Office. And it's ironic because that's like the sometimes the you have to know those shows because they're so memeable. Uh, I have definitely used scenes that I'm like, I had to rewatch or like ask a friend and be like, is this what are they referencing at this scene? <laughs> I because I've definitely talked about bad moments. I definitely has, have used a GIF um that was probably not should have been like from a movie that i probably shouldn't have referenced before <laughs> um that's not my worst you know um social sin i've had much more i'll tell you my worst one so you, people will feel this was angel remember this one you know you've done i'm sure you have where it's like you reply to a tweet and it's like they're like give 500 retweets and you can get a uh you know, pencil from the Carolina Panthers. well i did one where i was like if you get I think it was like a thousand or 10,000, a big difference, but I don't remember which one, but it was like, if you do a thousand retweets of this tweet, we will give you a Jersey. Well, I didn't look at the icon. I normally do this. This is like a, a rookie mistake from a veteran. I nor always do this. I always check the username and the profile picture. And this one, I was definitely guilty of doing this on my phone and not really doing this on my laptop where I feel a little bit more studious I was doing this on my phone and I replied to this and, you know, you do so many of these as a reply. This guy, I'm like, okay, I'll probably get 10 likes or 10 retweets. This was a meme that I didn't know was bad, but it was with, um, I'm, I'm blanking on the NBA player, but he was at a place where you throw money at certain people and that was the profile picture and that was it totally hit 10,000 or some number and everyone came up to me and like and you didn't look at the profile picture and I was like I I mean he technically I could have been like you know it happened after I he retweeted it and so many but it was not and Angela never lets me live it down of just like you, you were, you taught me everything. And then you made that mistake. I was like, I know it's so bad, but that was my like embarrassing moment. So kids, everyone working in social, I'm sure you probably learned this on day one, but look at the username, the name displayed and the profile picture probably before you tweet from a brand account <laughs> yes the, uh that's it's so hard yeah because it looking at even like what they've tweeted in the past like just a quick oh, scan yeah. a quick scan will tell you a lot so i yeah i i've i've made similar mistakes uh okay, as that in, the, in the past year so don't feel bad um i feel better now but um but yeah but Bar i i feel you parks and rec's one of my favorite shows so i've watched every episode like six times the office i've literally seen a half an episode but i've used so many memes of the office yeah, yeah. throughout my career that it's like you would think Basically i would know <laughs> yeah like you'd think i would know i i still have yeah. no idea oh man um friends or seinfeld i didn't watch a lot of either I'm bad at this game, but I did, <clears throat> I know my, my siblings loved Seinfeld. So I do remember watching the finale and stuff. Um, but I, I, what, I don't really watch friends, but I do like, you know, the gifts are gifable. They're so fun. You know, I've definitely have used a few moments of the pivot side at something, um, yeah. probably some, some, you know, move on the field but uh yeah I, i'm bad at this i don't watch a lot of i i don't watch a lot of tv right now or in my life i guess yeah uh, movies right, more movies movies yeah yeah right now i would say like there are still movies i probably need to see that i've been trying to see for years and just 
don't have time. And when I actually have time, I don't feel like watching a three hour movie. I put on something that I've seen a hundred times and fall asleep at this point. Same. I've seen um, Top Gun Maverick a little too much now. I don't know why it's my comfort movie for the last few years. <laughs> that's my, my sister and I, uh, all these years, like our comfort movie was Elf, like with Will Ferrell. Oh, so like good. anytime it was like, we needed a smile or had a rough day. It was like, it could be July and it's like, we're watching Elf. So I, I've, I've seen that so many times. So sweet. Uh, cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese? Oh, definitely Cool Ranch for sure. Uh, TikTok reels or shorts? I'm definitely a TikTok person. I don't make them. I'm a consumer of them. I'm like one of those like faceless, nameless accounts that just like watches things. I definitely, I use TikTok so much more for my questions. Like, I don't know if you as a parent, I'm like, how, like, what are like activities to do with your preschooler? Or, you know, we, I did, I just did a lot of, um, we made like, uh, I got, uh, cotton balls and we made Santa during Christmas and stuff. Yeah. So I use TikTok a lot for search <laughs> engine optimization. I am your, when they say that people use it, I'm like, I totally do. I use it. <laughs> oh yeah. What, uh, what, what, what can I do with a child when it's too cold to go outside? <laughs> That's yep. oh man, all winter like that too. Yes. All, all winter. It's been like, what else can we do? Like right now for, for her birthday party, we had, we have this like blow up dinosaur pool that we put in the yard. We blew it up and put it up in our playroom and filled it with like the balls. <laughs> and so it's, that. it's just been up there for the last like month now. And it's like, she plays in it every day. And so it's going to stay until it gets warm enough that she wants to swim in it. Exactly. Smart. Uh, <laughs> That's genius. Uh, Google Plus or IGTV? Oh my gosh. All I remember is one of my early times with Google Plus. Like my first thing after Dan hired me, he's like, okay, you're going to update Google Plus. And I was like, Google Plus. And in my head, I would never say this at the time, but I was like, who uses Google Plus and should we be marketing to them? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Anxiety trying to turn. Um, this is my other story for you of i dan had when he left it was wonky how the counts were set up and dan will admit sometimes like when you just get started it's like like even the chargers right that their old account was joel's account like his personal yeah. account so when he left somehow google changed the carolina panthers um like merged the Carolina Panthers YouTube to my personal, my Amy Keen personal. And I just remember immediately I'm at dinner and I get a text from one of the scouts and they're like, Hey, just FYI, what is this? And it's a screen grab of my face. This It says the Carolina Panthers though. And it's mortifying. And I, it's all because of some Google, Google plus weird thing where like all of a sudden it transferred. It didn't make me a manager. It made me an owner and it just merged my home videos and the Panther. It was mortifying. Like, yeah. Oh. Talk about bad, ex bad juju. I don't know. I could do all these stores all week. It just, I've had some crazy experiences. That, <laughs> I'm sure you like is... you have to call it. Oh man. Terrible. Like that would be that's like the nightmare is just like, Hey, um, what did you, did you mean this? No. And you're like, Oh man. All right. Uh, um, let me, let me call you back. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, all right. Last question. I I'm over two on TV questions. So I'm, I got high hopes for this one. Uh, rate the finale of game of Thrones one to 10. Ooh. Okay, I did watch Game of Thrones, but I watched like two years after everyone <laughs> after the whole thing. Um, but I I didn't think it was what I would wanted. I loved the episode a few, I don't know the name of it, but it was like the real big battle scene, like that epic one we all have been that movie I I or that episode I did think was like one of the best movies of cinema I've ever. I don't know if I'm not a film person. I shouldn't have said cinema, maybe TV, whatever it was. I thought that was amazing. Um, so, but I, I couldn't, it, I won't watch it again. It was way too gory 
for me just in my speed i'm like rom-coms and nicholas sparks genres so i need <laughs> something a little lighter next time yeah for sure well yeah i i remember like i i don't think i watched the first like four seasons i think i watched them all at once once i kind of got into it and then watched like the last i think there was two more seasons or three i can't remember but then I watched like with the world at that time, which was was really fun. So I, it wasn't exactly how I wanted it to end, but it wasn't nearly as bad as everyone says it. Oh was, yeah, so. it, I I'm I'm sure that's right. If I probably take back my memory there. <laughs> well, cool. Well, honestly, like I I can't thank you enough. Um, this has been a long time coming, and it, it's amazing to have you on here. And and I I can't wait for everyone to see this. Um, but uh, this was another episode of a very good social media podcast where we try to live up to that name every day. Uh, and thank you again. And we'll see you next time. I've had the best time. Thank you.